Shall we start? Yeah? Okay. Hi. Hi all. Um, I'm... <laughs> I'm Mark Villard. I, uh, I work for Red Hat. Uh, uh, among other things, I'm uh, responsible for Felgrind in uh, Fedora, uh, RHEL, and the uh, developer toolkit. Developer toolkit is new versions of developer tools for RHEL because RHEL is stable. So sometimes you want newer versions of tools on it. Um, so if anything is wrong with uh, that, just uh, bug me. Um, or actually take a subscription to RHEL or use Fedora for free and bug me. Um, <coughs> so this talk came from uh, a discussion we had on the GLPC list. Uh, uh, started with uh, sanitizer uh, developers uh, uh, who uh, had some problems because uh, GCC, uh, GLibc also does memory protection uh, by fortification of C library functions and uh, uh, then the sanitizers would either not see it or have to intercept different uh, functions. Um, and it, it is interesting uh, uh, that you now have different memory protectors that uh, somewhat do try to do the same thing on, on different levels. So GC, GLibc uh, does fortification of C library functions um, on a, a very low level, th and that's mainly what this talk will be uh, about. Um, then uh, the sanitizers, they uh, compile in checks, uh, and uh, they are more dynamic. The, the fortification is mostly statically ch uh, checking. And then, of course, you have Feldmine and memcheck who the whole program address space tracking. Um, so, uh, fortification. Um, most distros now build with uh, this enabled. Uh, so you just define fortify source to two. You can also define it to one, but that's not that uh, interesting. And um, uh, when you define that ma macro, it causes some lightweight checks. Uh, interestingly enough, there isn't that much documentation about it. This is kind of it, <laughs> uh, which, which, which was surprising. So I, I hope by this talk, I, I explain a bit more what it really does. Uh, uh, and why you actually should do it, and partly why it is um, somewhat vague is because uh, it really is just defining the Fortify source macro, and then basically anything you com uh, compile can do something. So it's uh, what we see. It isn't actually just uh, these. Uh, memory uh, operations, uh, but in glibc it uh, does a couple of other checks also. Um, so fortification is basically one somewhat complicated uh, but very cool uh, compiler trick. Um, there's a function built in object size um, that gives you the size of an object uh, uh, given a pointer. And then uh, you have some C pro processor tricks which uh, then uh, uh, take the output of built-in object size and uh, uh, do the checks. So the, 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 that's uh, really 
uh, nice and a nice uh, magic function. Um, also, both in object size is actually it has it has documentation. Um, yes, here it is. Um, but it is kind of um, I found it hard to understand really what it does. So it returns a constant number of bytes from pointer to the end of the object pointer pointer points to if known at compile time. <laughs> Um, and then uh, you can give it a type which is defined as 0, 1, 2, or 3. Um, and uh, that changes uh, the behavior a bit. Um, the, the, uh, the thing is that it has to be known at compile time. If it isn't known at compile time, then uh, uh, the function will return either zero or minus one. They, in the documentation, it's always called minus one, but it is size max, of course, because size t is, say, unsigned. Uh, so depending on type, you can uh, say, that's nice, I, I don't know the number, or, well, pretend it's as big as can be represented. Um, and, uh, uh, it basically only works if you optimize, because then the compiler really can see the uh, 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 see the object behind the pointer. If you uh, um, the glibc uh, sources actually check if fortify source is defined, uh, they error out if you don't use optimization, but in fact you don't have to, it will just return zero or minus one. Um, so to simplify this a bit, if you are using this yourself, um, uh, and I think you should, <laughs> because it, it, if, if, if you uh, provide a C library, uh, uh, then I think it's really nice to provide fortified. Uh, uh, there are so many things you can do wrong. Uh, and uh, well, let, let's just <laughs> try this out first. So just set the type to one, and then it will return uh, size max if it doesn't know uh, how big uh, the object that is being pointed to is and otherwise it will return the largest remain, remaining size sub-object the pointer points to. So <laughs> um, this uh, example uh, 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 um, let, let's just you, you have p which just points there an int is uh, uh, four bytes long, it points at the start of B, so uh, built-in object size of P is four. Uh, the same for Q, which points just inside this arrow, the remaining size of the arrow is nine, and this is nice. It doesn't really know the object size, but it can give you, at least if you give it one, the largest sub-object size that's still available, so that's nine in this case. Um, with the type, you can uh, uh, do other tricks. Uh, some of them, I don't actually know when they are useful. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, as a kind of homework exercise, you can try type zero, two, three, um, and zero is kind of interesting. There, it gives the remain the the remaining type of the outer object that's in there. That's sometimes useful. So uh, R points to 
<laughs> P or Q and uh, Q points one after the first and the remaining structure is 24. Is there padding involved? Yeah, probably there's padding between here. <laughs> so now it doesn't give the minimum but the maximum. Uh, I've seen this used in uh, glibc if you have a read function, for example, that you give a buffer and they think, ah, they probably know the whole structure layout and they want to fill it completely. Um, the others uh, give the minimum of the sub object and the read the <laughs> here the uh, what we always will use is you get the maximum of the subtypes that are being pointed to um, so here is one example that's really nice and small and immediately shows uh, why this is so useful and why I think everybody should uh, at it. Uh, you have a checked version of uh, get current working directory. Um, you give it a buffer and you claim the size of the buffer. Um, so uh, what uh, glibc will do is it has this function and says I want to know what the buffer length really is uh, and if the size given by the user is bigger than uh, the buffer really points to, then I fail. Otherwise, I give you the current working directory. So how it works is, <laughs> um, I actually cleaned this up a bit <laughs> because uh, uh, tlibc header files are interesting to read. Um, but basically, it defines this new function. It redirects the original uh, get working directory to an alias. Uh, it directs the checked version to uh, uh, another alias called warn, which has an extra attribute, uh, um, a warning attribute that the compiler uh, can see, and then the magic. Um, so uh, your uh, uh, get working uh, current working directory it uh, asks the size of the buffer. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, uh, if it doesn't know the buffer, then Ah, okay, we just call the current working directory. If we do know the size and uh, if we do know the buffer size and we know the uh, the size at compile time, it's it's actually a constant. Uh, um, uh, let's see, why does this? Uh, oh yeah, yeah. If if it is a ah, not. Good. So if it is a constant we uh, are here, then we check the constant against the compiler constant and uh, we call the function with the warning. If everything is a constant, then uh, 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 this is defined as an inline function in the header file. So just warning function get called and you get a warning at compile time, which is really nice. Otherwise, if we do know uh, the buffer size, but the size uh, given by the user isn't a constant, then we call the checking function. Um, so, um, nobody would write this code, but I actually have made this mistake myself. <laughs> Uh, and this is why I think fortified uh, functions are a really good idea because, well, compilers should work with stupid people like me. 
Um, here I thought I should give the maximum, uh, the maximum path to get working directory. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, that should have been the size, which is uh, uh, 16. Uh, the funny thing is it just works, of course, because uh, I have a short name, so my home directory name is short, and it's, it's perfect. If we run it under Valkwind, um, uh, Valkwind will see, ah, wait a minute, if you would run it somewhere else, then uh, the system call uh, would override some unaddressable bytes, uh, and it even tells you uh, that that is right after uh, where you malloced it, which is line nine. Probably there was something before that. So this is really great, but it could actually be better. If we compile this with Fortify source, then the compiler already gives a warning. Um, and uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the warning message is somewhat confusing if you don't know which tricks are being used, which is kind of uh, a bummer. I don't know if we could um, uh, make the compiler smarter. Uh, nice thing about this is that it doesn't need any smarts, it just needs a header file which is uh, smart. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but this is actually better than having to run it on a file card. Uh, if you uh, ignore this warning, it's just a warning and who compiles with W error, you should, um, you can actually run it. And ta-da! Uh, the buffer overflow is uh, detected, uh, the program is immediately terminated, because here um, uh, glibc kind of deduced something bad will happen. You will overwrite some memory uh, that you're not supposed to. Um, the only bad thing about it is, ah, uh, this is, a, where did I call what? Um, uh, so you, <laughs> would like to then, at least that is what I always uh, do, is run it under Valgrind. Hmm. We get the same thing in that a stack trace that aborts. Um, which, which isn't so nice. <laughs> uh, so why do we have uh, uh, th 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 this, this problem? Um, uh, so the, the problems we see with it are, uh, it's not as good and expressive warnings, but uh, on the other hand, it is much earlier. Um, uh, it, it only works when the compiler can statically deduce buffer bounds, uh, uh, which actually is surprisingly often. <laughs> um, um, but it, it blinds the other memory protectors uh, because um, the actual bad usage isn't done anymore. So the other memory protectors don't see it, even if they have much more information that they could give you about the address that is being misused. Um, uh, on the other hand, it might actually uh, 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 flag something that uh, Valgrind or Memcheck would uh, miss because the object knows the object size. Uh, and as we saw in that, uh, that, that first example, if you have a large structure, uh, Memcheck might think, yeah, well, there's addressable memory. Uh, I don't mind if you write over that. So. Uh, that's uh, nice, um, but on the other hand, and that was the complaint uh, uh, from the 
sanitizer people is it might obscure tracking of memory usage uh, because the standard functions don't get called anymore. Um, uh, and uh, to be honest, I first thought, oh, that's a big problem, but Valgrind is mostly immune to that because it has this whole program uh, view of the world. But other sanitizers uh, uh, don't, or you should uh, rebuild your whole world with the sanitizers, including uh, uh, glibc. And uh, uh, first, I, I'm i not sure they uh, glibc can be compiled, and then um, uh, uh, you you wouldn't want to do that in production because it does really slow down your program and worse people have been doing it in production <laughs> uh, but the sanitizers come with their own libraries uh, which do various things during uh, uh, error reporting and people quickly found out hey I can misuse those to overwrite files, or nah, then you ha you have your sanitizers uh, work against you and introduce new security issues. Um, but it would be really nice to have the good without the bad. Um, and at least for Valkyrie, uh, we can uh, happily. Um, so, um, uh, what should we do? First, we should uh, uh, make Valgrind aware of what the address was. So, instead of just aborting what Jack Phil kind of does, uh, uh, we, we provided the address that caused the problem. Um, so, that's basically a simple uh, change in uh, uh, check fill, we uh, say, okay, something bad happened uh, and it was there. Uh, and then um, uh, we either overwrite check fill or uh, we annotate uh, uh, check fill to make uh, Valkyrie aware of uh, the issue. First, we, we make the memory non-accessible or tell <coughs> Valgrind, uh, we don't think that memory should be accessible, even if uh, Memcheck thinks it is. And then we ask <laughs> it, is that memory accessible? Well, no. Um, and then we, we fail like normal. And amazingly, that just works. Uh, and we even just get the uh, 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 the original uh, 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 that address was allocated at that line. Uh, uh, so this is really, really nice. Except uh, uh, there. Um, as soon as I suggested this, <laughs> DC GLIPC developers are um, conservative. <laughs> Let's call it that way. Um, so that bloats the code. You have to pass an, ar uh, uh, an argument, you have to calculate the argument. Uh, uh, every instruction is one too many. Ah! Um, so yeah, they, they kind of have a point. They really want this to be always on. So uh, anything that might get people to turn it off, they don't want it. Um, and um, then uh, they thought, said, well, you didn't really do your homework because it's not always an exact address. Uh, we use it for everything. Oh, right. So, for example, select takes uh, file descriptor sets, which are really uh, 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 
uh, a byte set, a, a bit set of widths. Uh, so if you try to put a file descriptor bigger than um, file descriptor maximum <laughs> in there, they generate a check fail. Which is correct because uh, they, they would calculate a bit outside uh, the, uh, uh, the file descriptor set, but right. And they are kind of right that you don't always know the exact address or you have to calculate it uh, uh, because there could be mul multiple buffers. Uh, uh. Anyway. Um, and uh, this is actually a, 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 uh, a good point. Felgrind could give even better messages, hints. Uh, that is true because here you see that well, it's an address of bytes found during client check request. Uh, yeah, that's we we could do better, and sometimes we do. Uh, uh, so we already have uh, 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 some overrides for man move check uh, uh, and. Uh, Actually, I believe it's only those four uh, that we overwrite and then uh, we uh, do, for example, overlap checking on the buffers. And so, yes, we could. Uh, but to be honest, most of them are really as simple as get current working directory. So uh, there is not that much more than we uh, can do. Wow, I'm going really fast. Yeah, okay. Uh, ah. Yeah, I had one other slide that's not here, but so I'm slowing down and I'll try to do this one slide in 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so the issue is I haven't done most of the work. <laughs> Uh, there are 75 check functions in uh, glibc um, and about 50 of them are like uh, uh, get current working directory. So instead of doing this presentation, I could have actually done that. Um, the other 25 are somewhat more tricky. So. Uh, if you have the SN printf uh, family of checks that actually sets a flag uh, that gets checked by the normal uh, printf code. So you can't really uh, rewrite them completely as an overwrite. Um, uh, and there is a problem that you see gets smarter, ah, darn compiler. So um, uh, uh, GCC now has built-ins for uh, 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 this set of functions. And um, uh, what glibc does is just, if fortify source is on, then we just alias uh, string n copy to built-in string and copy check and to see in lines it all and uh, uh, you there's a f there isn't a function left anymore uh, it only uh, it only has a uh, uh, check fill uh, uh, that does get called so in that case we can uh, override uh, uh, check fail and produce at least a better uh, backtrace, uh, but without an address. And that's interesting because all these built-ins really work on a specific address that you would overwrite that is bad. Ah, I, I really want to ask them to please make an exception and call something like check failed address with an address to make us happier. Um, I actually had one conclusions. Um, the conclusions were, uh, if you have a 
C library, you maintain a C library, and it takes buffers and sizes separately. <laughs> Please think about adding fortif uh, fortification. Uh, it 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 really is uh, is uh, it it isn't that nice, but it isn't that much work, and uh, it it really saves lives. Well. <laughs> Lots of programmer frustration. Um, uh, and if you do, please um, uh, add something like uh, 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 hints uh, to uh, client requests to Valgrind. Um, the glibc people obviously don't like this generates code. It does generate code, uh, but it, uh, it generates a slightly complicated no-op. So uh, it, it shouldn't really be that hard. And this really is in your slow path if something goes bad. So do, uh, if you don't do that, then write a failure that uh, is just specific about what the failure was. Um, and, and finally, yeah, maybe I, 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 I should work out these uh, uh, functions maybe in the hackathon at the end and then uh, go back to the glibcgc people and say, look, I have to write so much code, can you just have different failure uh, uh, functions to call so that we can overwrite them nicer. Okay, you haven't put up any sign, so I guess I still have 50 minutes, yes. Okay, well, let's see if people have any questions. Ah, yes. Uh, I think I'll add uh, uh, two comments. So first of all, this that technology is quite old, about 12 years old in GLBC, so it's mature and you can safely use it. 12 years. Uh, and I think that, well, the chip fail is on the error part, so it's not a problem to put some code there. Yes. I have no problems. <laughs> uh, I mean, taking my GLBC head on, I have no Oh, okay. Taking Good. Well, this this talk was a success for me at least. <laughs> so you have my act. Address argument if you need. Okay. No, the, uh, uh, we probably have to introduce different check uh, because currently there are only two, I believe, check fill and check uh, stack overflow fail, uh, and. Uh, there, there are some uh, places where check fail is called where it doesn't involve an address, so probably we should have two, but maybe you can discuss that. Yeah. Okay, good. What was your question? Mm -hmm. so, I'm assuming there are 75 Yeah. No, no, no. There, there, there are 75, depending on precisely how you count uh, 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 functions that have been fortified in glibc. Uh, so, uh, my estimate is 50 of those are like the get current working directory where you just have the buffer and the size and you do some checks on uh, the buffer length and the size. And so the, the rest of the functions in the is not able to be fortified or I I I don't know if 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 they if they went to the max or not. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I I believe this, these are the most. I don't know. Okay. Yes. What about client side restrictions? Yep. Uh, so the the the, the clang. Clang provides similar features as the the fortified source for detecting. 
repeat the question. Yes, Clang uh, provides uh, some of the same features. I think you're calling about the sanitizers that are shared between GC and, and LLVM. Uh, so those work uh, differently. Uh, 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 here, most of the checks are done in a way that can be checked at compile time. Uh, and uh, the sanitizers at uh, uh, runtime checks. Uh, so um, yes, you could, but I think what uh, uh, um, uh, the, the sanitizers come with uh, helper libraries that you link against. And what we could maybe do with Velgrind is have our own uh, implementation of those helper libraries. I know um, Julian actually implemented for Epson uh, support to uh, have uh, Velgrind itself be Epson checked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it, it was so easy that Julian doesn't even remember. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the memory checkers are not as simple uh, if, uh, uh, as uh, the undefined absent, undefined behavior sanity analyzer, um, but I think it could be done. But we, we have to see. I think it 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 wouldn't be that hard because LVM and GC share them, so <laughs> there must at least be some <coughs> documentation on them. <laughs> So maybe it can be done, yes. Yes. Valgrind uh, observes, check, science observes the Balok uh, calls, but at the end, Valgrind uh, uh, knows it has been allocated, but doesn't know the time which is behind this uh, uh, Balok uh, memory. No. Valgrind uh, also uh, uh, can read the debugging form, which describes types. Uh, that's uh, what do you think about an idea to modify the compiler to tell to tools like Valgrin that this malloc call is allocated in this file so that the type would be remembers, remembered by tools like Mencheck and then can, could be used to do better diagnostics? Yeah, so I did think about it. The question is, can we uh, annotate uh, malloc or memory allocation functions with the type um, and maybe use the debug info to, uh, which describes which uh, pointers point to which variables, variables have types. Um, I I couldn't make that work because the IR works too low level. Uh, you you, uh, you 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 don't know why you have a pointer or why you do a uh, uh, a. Well, of course, we have, would have to change the compiler so that it would generate some calls to uh, a helper function to say. The malloc calls we will do, or a, that we have just done, by the way, it is this kind of type. And then you mean the yeah. IR and GCC, right? No, 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 in 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 Valgrind. I, uh, um, no, 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 to, to no, but 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 then then then, then you, you you can very, it 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 gets very hard to to keep associating a type. Uh, wh what you could maybe do is, uh, uh, GCC now has support for MPX, uh, the memory protection from Intel processors. And what those do is they, uh, they have uh, an extra set of registers that describe the bounds of pointers, so maybe we could reuse That's something like that. At runtime, they would more speak yeah. about changing the comp compiler, so that it says, here I see a call to malloc, and I know that I will assign the result to a pointer of that type, 
So at this place, I inform tools like Outrino or other tools that this pointer, no, here is the type. So you're proposing to actually take a kind of generated piece of code which tells tools um, like Outrino or other tools. That some so, and so then you could track the type, and then when you delete the hands, <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so my, my, my conceptual problem, I, I can't really think about it because the types are not what we work on. We, we work on instruction streams and I, uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Ah. So, so in GCC you're compiling something and then... Yeah. Does it call to Malum? And you maybe know what object, the type of the object you're allocating there is. So GCC generates a piece of code alongside the Malum call, which tells Malum what type it is. Yeah. But, Sorry? You speak about yeah, 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 specific yeah. compile option to say uh, help tools to track types. Yeah, but this instrumentation is not in Belgrade, it's on the GCC yes. side. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so so yes, y y you are right, so why am I confused on the Belgrade side? Because uh, I don't understand on the GC side how you would then uh, 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 Pass on their type because well, a you know, yeah. This instrumentation is not a great statement like well, the type of information is stored or something. Yes. And exactly. Well, when you load binary, you load some additional segments or load the the use some tools like Polygon and well, in a way you load more information you can add this information to it. How you annotate, well, is uh, why not? So, what you can annotate is the uh, type information. But I, I don't think the compiler is the right approach because, depending on your language, if you want to do ASM, uh, you, do not, you do not have types. Uh, the, 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 the type is uh, just a point of view from, from your language. But what you could do is doing some uh, static analysis to detect memory patterns, memory access patterns. And then uh, you can detect inconsistencies there. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so, so there is ESG checking pipes. Plus, there is each some limits for a lot of the future. It depends how you give your time. For sure, you, you can never work all the time, but I would imagine for the most of the time when GCC is compiling C, it pretty much knows the types of objects. So maybe it is more like what I said for the MPX extensions because there what they did was uh, output instructions that set up bounds for every pointer uh, based on the object sizes uh, and then you have it in the instruction stream and that would be easier for Falcon to see. And, and I also think uh, abusing or using the uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the sanitizer libraries might uh, be an easier way. Uh, okay. Yeah. Did we? <laughs>